Yeah, the feeling was, oh no, now I have to deliver on $20,000 worth of work. And that felt like a huge responsibility. And I don't know about you listening, but I had enough responsibilities in my life, right? Like maybe you've got a nine to five. I was a single mom. You know, I wanted to have a life. Uh, You know, I just had a lot going on at that time in my life. And so while, yeah, it felt like, okay, I'm going to be able to pay the bills for X amount of months. You know, I support my mom financially. That was going to be set. Not a worry. But it was that it was that weight of, well, now I've got twenty thousand dollars worth of work to do that felt so I don't know. How do the Gen Zers say like cringe? (laughs) (laughs) Did you feel that? I guess in my mind, it's like kind of every step of the way as a freelancer is like, oh, who am I to charge a hundred dollars for this? Who am I to charge a thousand dollars for this? Who am I to charge ten thousand dollars for this? And you kind of have to battle that imposter syndrome every step of the way but for whatever reason this was the one that was like oh i don't know this is this is a big uh, this is a big burden yeah for me the imposter syndrome only happened after the sale it was like yeah of course i'm the one like yeah look at me look at my credentials but then when you know when the contract was signed the deposit hit the bank account it was like oh, now i have to do this thing now i have to step into who I said I was on top of all the other things I already am in my life. And it just felt really like too much. Okay. So there's, there's a trading time for money and there's trading time for a lot of money, but there's still this sense of like, how do I, how do I get out of this? Like I'm trying to build something with a little bit more time leverage. Yeah. Amen. And that's when I came up with my membership for me, you know, I was sitting down you know, $20,000 contract. But then I also was starting this email list over here. And this was full of like beginners who it's going to take them a really long time to, you know, have the money to hire me for a $20,000 contract. And also like all this, this $20,000 was, you know, 20,000 hours in my mind, it might as well have been right. And I just wanted a way to get out of those contracts. I knew it was going to take me a while, but I wanted this way to, like Nick just said, to create more freedom of time, to be able to enjoy my kid, enjoy living on the beach, enjoy being newly single at the time. And this contract over here was not it. That was going to, you know, so to speak, like, chain me to my desk right i was gonna have to get up early in the morning i was gonna have to work late at light at night i was gonna have to you know really grow uh as a productive person (laughs) and i thought well what if i just came up with something else you know what if instead of having to keep signing these contracts because one day that contract's going to be over that money's going to be gone and i'm going to have to do this all over again And I'm nothing if not an efficient chick. Like I always say, if it takes more than two steps, I'm out of here. And so it was like, what can I create that's really simple and that eventually, emphasis on eventually, I didn't need the money right then, I just signed $20,000, that eventually is going to get me out of this client work. And that's when, you know, the light bulb went off and I thought, membership, monthly recurring revenue, what is sexier than that, baby? (laughs) <laughs> that's the dream right if i you know and, and uh, i was talking about this at a recent mastermind uh, event of mine where it's like even though the revenue in the business has been super predictable over the last several years you, you we're starting from scratch every single month like you know we gotta go gotta go and earn it and it's not freelance work it's not you know feast or famine and roller coaster of uh, you know generating leads and delivering that work and then going have to go hunt for more business but it it is and so like this is something that i've looking at trying to trying to figure out the right way uh, to set it up. And so that's one of the reasons for this call, like a little, a little bit of selfish uh, coaching here. I love it. So for me, it was, you know, my day rate. So, you know, if you book me for one day, it was $2,000. And so I sat down and I did a little bit of math of, uh, like to Nick's point of, I don't want to have to start over and over every single month. So what kind of membership can I create and how many people do I need in it 
to get me to that day rate. Like if I could just book myself with okay. the membership sales one day a week, you know, or one day a month, one day a week, you know, the whole calendar, right? Like future pacing myself. And I got really excited. I said, you know, I could do a low cost thing because I've got time. I've got this $20,000. I know I can do client work. And I know I could probably do it for a couple more years. So I'm, I'm going to go low cost because, again, that's low responsibility. I have a bunch of responsibility in my home life. I have a bunch of responsibility with my clients. What if I could create for my email list like this really low responsibility thing and just slowly build it up? And I said, okay, if I can get 100 members at $9, it's 900 bucks a month. That's like half, that's nearly half a day of my day rate. I could, that sounds doable. So I did it in, you know, like a bite-sized chunk. That sounds doable. And then within two years, if I could get a thousand people in at $9, that would be $9,000 a month recurring revenue, the way it blew my mind. Like, unlike you, maybe you're listening and you have a nine to five, y'all, I've never had a job before. <laughs> like my last <laughs> job was at a gas station when I was like 20 years old. And so I've always, like Nick said, every month I'm always starting over and I've been doing that my whole life. And so uh, at this it, point like in the, the game- The mental toll that that can take is, it's, yeah, it can be stressful. It's so stressful. And so I said, hey, I could do a couple more years of this low cost thing, this low responsibility thing. And after a couple years, if I could just remove the client work, I know in two years I'm going to come up with other ideas, you know, other courses, workshops, whatever. But if I could, you know, in two years remove client work, wow. And so I was really willing to be patient. You know, I, I didn't need the money right then, but I was willing to, you know, be patient and wait two years for the payoff. And guess what? It definitely paid off. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like it's working just fine. I want to hit on this low cost equals low responsibility, because I think that's an interesting distinction. And we'll get into the the numbers behind that because, okay, okay, I got to sell 100 members at $9. And oh, first of all, where am I going to find 100, 100 people to pay me? It's like, you know, going from zero to $1, I think is more difficult than going from $1 to a hundred dollars. It's like, well, if I charged a hundred bucks, I'd only need 10 members to get to a thousand bucks. It's like, you know, the, it seems almost harder, even though it's like low ticket, it seems almost harder to go out and find that many people and convince them to pull out their credit cards. I love that Nick just said this because it just shows you like you should create something that makes sense for your brain because I wholly disagree with what Nick is saying <laughs> I just, and not in a negative way, but like to me, I can get just about anybody to give me $9. I disagree with Nick. I think it's actually pretty simple to go out and find 100 people. Like for my personality, it's actually pretty easy for me to be out and to sell people. But I And I knew that about Liz Wilcox. I knew that I was already building this email list on the side. That was my side hustle to the client work, okay. right? Yeah, nice, nice. And so... I knew I had about 800 people on my email list and I teach email marketing. So I, I'm like, if I can't get a hundred out of 800, if I can't get one eighth, like who am I to teach this for nine bucks? And so for me, it, you know, very different okay, okay. than Nick's thinking was like, yeah, sure. I can get a hundred people. I can build buzz. I'm now, good if anybody at like, you know, one, one out of eight doesn't sound like a lot, but in terms of traditional email marketing what's like a 12 and a half percent conversion or something like it's pretty significant yeah and that i mean but, but i love this attitude going show. in like hey yeah, this that's is a whole this other is, show about conversions <laughs> it's like the old it's like the old you know joke about well you know google seo company and whoever shows up at the top that's the one you ought to hire um but it's like you know i ought to be able to sell these people is what i do um no Amen. i like i like this so what do people thank you uh get uh, for for the nine dollars like what's 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 behind the paywall yeah, so speaking of that, you know, bringing it back to that low responsibility, it was also like staying in my zone of genius. I knew I was good at email marketing, and I knew uh, that most people aren't. Like Nick mentioned, you know, 12.5% is outrageous. My member, or uh, yeah, my email list is 55% customers right now. So to me, it's like 12.5%, whatever. So 
for for me, I knew that was That's my zone incredible. of genius. That's Thank incredible. Thank you. <laughs> so for me, I knew I was really good at it. And I knew the missing piece for people is a weekly newsletter, just following up with their subscribers every week. That's something, you know, you're a side hustler. You're just working a few hours a night on this project, like sending an email, is that really what you need to be doing with your time? And so I knew if I could just write that newsletter for you, maybe you'd give it a shot and you would see, you know, results like mine. So within the membership, you just get a weekly newsletter template to take and make your own. That was low responsibility for me because in my client work, that's what I was already doing. I was writing emails for people. I had owned two businesses prior, writing emails to people. I had an entire catalog of emails that I had been writing for years and years and years. And so I can just have this one deliverable of this thing I already have a back catalog of that I can templatize and I can send out once a week. Yeah, I, I can commit to that for the payoff in two years. I'm going to be able to retire client work over here. Okay. Yeah. yeah, Liz, let's try it out. Okay. And this is just, it just delivered through email. I'm guessing like here, yeah. here's your, here's your template for the week, you know, fill in the blanks to make it applicable to your business. Listen, we are now in our third year of email marketing membership and it's got a, you know, it's got a login process. But when we started, y'all, it was a Google Drive. It was a link to a Google document and that is how I delivered it. Like we're talking low, low responsibility. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, start, start with where you're at. I remember we had somebody who was selling I feel like they sold like eight grand or something worth of pre-sales from a Man. Google Docs sales page. Like, look, it didn't have to be fancy. Like, here, this is what's going to be. Um, it doesn't exist yet, but take a chance. You know, roll the dice, click here. You know, it links to my PayPal or something. It's like, fantastic. Okay, so people get this weekly newsletter template, and I, you know, probably at this point, like access to the last three years worth of templates. At this point, is that something that is included? Correct. Nowadays, you get access to everything, and I'm still churning out the content baby okay no you know no courses no community no coaching you know the, the other c's of, of a membership business included. yeah yeah so when i first started it was it was just that template and after a year i had a thousand members so it, it didn't take yeah. me two years it took me about a year um and that's when i opened up that community that's when i opened up a facebook group and let me tell you like if you're thinking of a membership wait until you've got a good solid group because even to this day that community runs itself i'm in there on mondays and i'm in there on fridays my assistant uh she tends to look at it to make sure nobody's arguing we've never had a fight and there's almost five thousand people in that group now yeah. um and uh it just it essentially runs itself but when you're first starting i think to Nick's point about no community, none of this other content, uh, that tends to really dilute what you're trying to do and dilute uh, people actually taking action on what you're trying to do. And I just wanted you to send the newsletter. So I was like, no, you're not getting community. No, you're not getting anything else. Just do this thing, then we can talk. <laughs> and so yeah. now, nowadays I do have more because there's more people and they want to interact, but that was never part of the plan. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Super, super simple offer. Here's what it is. Here's what you get. Here's how much it costs. And let's, let's go to work. Now this is going to be, you're probably like asking a musician, like how you keep coming up with new songs. Like, do you worry about like running out of, of temp? Like, do you exhaust the, you know, the template database in your head at a certain point and just like, I mean, I guess you could probably start recycling and I don't know how many people would notice, but like to come up with something new every week is like, you know, probably low commitment for you, but sounds somewhat daunting for somebody who's not in that space. Yeah. A lot of people I, like, how do you keep coming up with ideas? And I think <laughs> to Nick's point, like, I don't know how many albums did Kiss have, <laughs> right? Like, how do you, you know, like some of it's similar, but it's all, you know, feels fresh and different. And yeah, it's, it's just that same thing. I think, oh, you know, what's relevant for today? What's the energy of this month you know what am i seeing in the group that sparks an idea i have you know like a running google doc of you know oh i read i read this and it 
I thought that would be a good email or something like that. Um, but the, the genius thing about email marketing is it really just comes down to three things, showing you're invested in your reader, becoming relatable to that reader and staying top of mind to your reader. And so there's infinite possibilities to write to them, to show how invested you are, to relate to them, you know, and just doing it weekly helps you stay top of mind. So I don't think I'll ever run out of ideas. And it's actually helped me become a more disciplined person. I feel like, like this has to go out, Liz. This is how you buy groceries. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, sit down and write and the muse will come. <laughs> That's fair. That was something I was legit worried about, you know, in starting the, the podcast. Like I'm going to run out of people to talk to, going to run out of ideas. And now, you know, almost 11 years later, 600, this is episode 600. It's like, no, there's, there's always new stuff coming across my desk. And, and I just love it because it just, you know, sparks so much creativity and inspiration and uh, to hear what everybody else is doing. Okay. Uh, if, if somebody else is sitting on the sideline, like this kind of a unique, you know, call it a, like selling your sawdust as a freelancer. Like I was coming up with these templates. I was coming up with these emails anyway, you know, I could templatize that and, you know, sell it instead of one-to-one, -one, sell it one-to-many. Really cool. Like if you're coaching somebody else to start their own recurring revenue business or their own membership model, like what, you know, where, where do you think they ought to look for that similar you know, spark of inspiration? I think the number one thing outside of what Nick said, I love what he said, sell your sawdust. You know, I'm already doing this over here. How can I turn this into a one-to-many situation? Outside of that is like thinking about the many. Who are we selling this to? And what do they actually need? For me, I knew, I just knew the membership was gonna work because I knew my number one, or the number one issue for my potential customers was writing that newsletter. And I also knew that no one else was selling that. Within my industry, everyone is selling sales, right? You know, here's your sales copy. Here's your launch emails. You know, here's your sales page template. Okay, because okay. Because that's what money makes money, right? Yeah. And so nobody was really talking to the people, you know, that just needed like, oh, I, I launched or I launched and it flopped. What happened? It was like, oh, well, then... You have to hire me to look inside your business and that's even more expensive when really i already knew the answer you're not sending weekly newsletters that show how you're invested and make you relatable i already knew that and so when you're thinking about your own membership it's like what do you know about your ideal customer and maybe what is nobody else selling so those are kind of like a double whammy that I knew my membership was going to be successful. And if you can come up with something like that too, it's over for everybody else. <laughs> yeah. And I think like, this is probably from uh, like 80, 20 sales and marketing. You think about, you know, the different pricing tiers, you know, have you have the, you know, do it yourselfer, you know, at the low ticket and then maybe the done with you at the medium price and then the full on like done for you, the $20,000 package at the top end and like, you know, serving a different audience, at each different level that we had like Colin uh, from blackjack apprenticeship. And, you know, I think he had like a $3 app and he had like a $300, you know, uh, video course membership thing, you know, on how to learn how to count cards and do blackjack. And then for like many, many thousands of dollars, like come hang out with me in Vegas for a weekend and we'll just do it like live and in person, like thinking of different, different pricing tiers is something that, uh, that that's coming to mind as you're kind of describing this. But I want to go back yeah. to this, you know, these first 100 members, like this email list of 800 people. How did they find you? you know, how, how did you initially connect with them? I think smart to be building that personal brand and building that awareness and email list on the side from the client work. But it does, 800 people doesn't happen by accident. So let's talk about that. Yeah. So I, I always say like list building, building your list and visibility are like Mary Kate and Ashley Olson. Like I know they're different, but I can't tell them apart. So the more visible you become, right? and this is the same in client work, the more visible you become, the more referrals you're gonna get, right? The more people are gonna reach out to you. It's the same with list building. 
you know, just get visible. Of course, I tend to get on a lot of podcasts. Pretty sure I'm at like the 300 mark of podcast interviews. Um, I also, you know, I do a lot of private trainings. I've done two today. And so I'm constantly just trying to get my name out there. And remember what I said about, yeah, well, it's kind of easy for me to sell because I'm always putting myself out there. <laughs> um, so that's how I did it. Of course, how you do it might be differently. Some people are into guest blogging or just going to in-person events and networking there. Um, but just, you know, you have to be your own hype man. You have to, no one is going to grow your email list for you. You have to get out there, get visible and grow the list yourself. So is that a typical, you know, funnel or flow early on? Like, hey, I'm going to guest on this podcast. I'm going to come on. I'm going to, you know, be the expert on email marketing. If you want to learn more, come join the list at LizWilcox.com. Like, was the, you know, thinking, you know, years ahead in this case, like for this eventual thing, like just trying to build up that initial following. Yeah, I like what Nick said, thinking years ahead, right? It's not, you know, today, if I was just thinking about today or this week or this month, I would, I would still be doing client work, right? But I'm thinking about Liz Wilcox in the future. What does she need? Well, she needs an email list so that she can stop doing client work, right? So I yeah. started it first and foremost. And yeah, the typical flow is, you know, I get on someone else's platform. Again, I'm nothing if not efficient. Again, I have a lot of responsibility outside of the side hustle. And so what's the most efficient way? It's not to have my own podcast. Like Nick will tell you, <laughs> you got to have an editor or you got to, you got to, you know, figure out how your mic works. You got to figure out Riverside and Apple and all this other thing. That's not very efficient way to grow. <laughs> said, said with love. Shout out to your 600 episodes. <laughs> I think that's amazing. Uh, you know, hashtag uh, true story for sure. <laughs> but when I, when I end the podcast, you know what I do? I just hit that leave button and then Nick takes the rest <laughs> over, yeah, right? Yeah, your, your, your work and is over, just, yeah. Right. And then when the podcast airs, what do I just, I just hit the share button. I share to my Instagram stories, my Facebook group, my email list, right? Yeah. It's, it's simple for me. I don't have to do all the technical stuff. And so, yeah, the typical flow is get on the podcast, you know, hopefully don't sound like an idiot, sound like I know what I'm talking about. And then, oh, by the way, join my email list. You'll get A, B, C, D, E, F, G. In this case, you get a welcome sequence, some newsletter templates, imagine that, uh, and some subject lines. So it, it works pretty well. Okay. Let's talk about that initial offer, like pitching to this email list for the first time. Like, hey, I'm thinking of creating this thing, or I did create this thing. It's nine bucks. Come sign up. Like, what was, how was that uh, presented? Yeah, so it was the subject line, can I have $9? <laughs> it goes back to like, yeah, of course I'm just going to ask. <laughs> That's okay. simple. Uh, we tend, let it be a lesson. You know, maybe you're driving or doing the dishes right now, but, and you can't write it down, but commit to memory. We overcomplicate things. Like, just keep it simple. So subject line, can I have $9? And I literally wrote something like, hey, I've had this idea to create this membership with weekly newsletter templates. I know the number one problem I see with my clients when they launch and it doesn't do well is they're not sending weekly newsletter templates. Maybe you've had a similar experience. I'm gonna send you a newsletter template every single week. It's $9. Uh, I know that sounds cheap, but these templates are going to be awesome. If you've been on my email list for a while, you know my stuff is awesome. So, you know, why not join? Can I have $9? And this is the kicker. I told people I want to get a hundred people in in the next thirty days. Okay. That was my way like, of saying like <laughs> I'm serious about this. And then I signed off. Some level of like public accountability. You know, we're going to be transparent with the number of members. Like, hey, you're you know assigned a, a member number. Like, I, I went to. <laughs> Like I went to REI. It sounds this like a prison. Like, like, well, no, hey, you're member number, you know, 43 or whatever. Like, oh, cool. You know, I'm a founding member. I was in the first hundred because I went to REI and they're like, well, you know, this is like in high school. They're like, well, okay, well, it's your, you know, what's your member number? Like, I don't know, you know, you know, look it up under Loper. And they found me, but they also found my grandpa who had been, you know, and his member number was like, you know, 
in the four digits or something like it was wow. it was great like he was like one of these like early early members so i imagine there's like a point of pride of like oh I, w I was there at the beginning like i remember when you know this thing was uh just getting started okay so i love that i'm gonna steal how, that idea for how member long does numbers. It, i like it now how long does it take to get to uh 100 members uh it took me 28 days um okay. we launched february 16th 2021 and I forgot that February is only 28 days. I was like, oh my gosh, I've got to get 100 today. Today's the 30th day. And so I was like, push, push, push. You know, I sent like two or three emails, I think, that day. Um, and we hit the 100. And then I realized I had two more days. And I thought, well, we made it. <laughs> okay. You know, like sprint, nothing wrong with a sprint to the finish. Yes, uh, so, under the deadline. Yeah, so it, it felt really good. And I did that, like Nick said, for that public accountability, but also so that, you know, I could take myself seriously, right? Like it wasn't this idea and it's like, oh, well, I only made three sales and well, you know, Liz, just keep grinding, just get back to client work. This isn't working. It was like, nope, I'm going to commit. And it helped me, like Nick said, like stay accountable. And then the second reason, and let this just be a little note to you, if you ever launch your own digital product, it's hype, right? Like I'm really good at hyping people up. <laughs> um, and so it was, oh my gosh, this lady's getting 100 members. Like this must be a serious thing. I need to take a look. It's the same way, you know, when Adidas partners with Beyonce, they're sending clothes to other celebrities to post on their Instagram. They're hyping it up before the clothes ever hit stores, right? It's that exact same thing. We're going to get 100 people in in 30 days. Oh, snap, 100 people. I want to be, like Nick said, like, I want to be one of those uh, first 100. That's a big deal. Like, she's doing something over here. Let's get inside. Let's you know, invest. This is exciting. Yeah. Well, some, some level of social proof involved. Well, it's like, well, shoot, mm -hmm. if, if 99 other people are doing it, I guess, hey, you, what am I missing here? You know, right. I, better, uh, I better get on in. All right. So you get your 100 members in 28 days. And then what happens after that? Now you have to play this kind of dual game. Well, I still got to do my client work. Now I got to deliver what I promised to these people. And I would really like to make that 200, 300, 500 members, a thousand members. And so I got to continue to kind of, you know, add new people into my world at the, at the very top of the funnel. Let's see what happens next. Yeah. To be honest, I had to deliver on that $20,000 of <laughs> client work. Yeah. And so I was doing that and I was maintaining those hundred people delivering on that weekly content in order to get that done what I would do, and this is not for everyone. Again, this is like having to be incredibly disciplined. I actually got up at four in the morning every single day and I would do a few hours of client work to ensure that I got it done. Because also the membership was exciting. People were wanting to talk to me about it. People were like, oh my gosh, 100 members in 30 days. You know, what yeah. is it? You know, so it was starting to kind of grow on its own. It's in its own like very like, super niche, small, tight knit community that I was in. And so it did, it did grow, not very rapidly, but I think within the first like three months while I was still working on client work, it, it like two and a half X, it had like 250 members in the first 90 days. Yeah. And so it really was growing. So I did have to be disciplined to finish my work. But once those contracts were done, that's when the magic really happened. I had a few, that's when I started focusing on my VIP days so I could just work one day and get it over with. And I knew I had something with this membership. I knew that maybe this isn't gonna take two years. And so I buckled down, I actually opened up affiliates. So this is where, you know, somebody sells your thing, you give them a certain percentage. And I said, I'm gonna give you 50% of the sale. I know it's only $9, but this thing is, you know, unlike any other offer on the market. And, you know, who wouldn't like $4.50 every single month? You sell two people into the membership, you get your membership for free, basically. So I opened up affiliates and within three months of opening up affiliates, so the membership will say is about seven months, 
uh, we had about 700 people in the membership. So it really started growing. People were very excited to share and okay. actually very excited about the $4.50. <laughs> Interesting. So yeah, because it's like, oh, it's it's a low ticket, but it's recurring. And you can see, it how, it starts, you see how it starts to stack up. So opening that initially to the existing member base. Hey, can I incentivize you to share with a friend? Like, how do I turn one member into two? I love this. And we had um, Tiffany Aliche from the Budget Nista on early, you know, years and years ago. And that was like, you know, she was doing like the 30 day live richer challenge. Day one, find an accountability partner. <laughs> like, boom, you just love doubled it. her, doubled her enrollments. Uh, but this is, this is cool. So kind of like leveraging the people who already know, like, and trust you to help evangelize, to help go out and spread the word. Now, mechanically, this is through, uh, like, what's the software that's that's uh, tracking the referrals? Yeah, I used Samcart, um, and now I use Thrivecart, which is cheaper. Okay, Thrivecart is like one-off uh, fee yeah, versus... Yeah, it's a one-time fee. And so after I think about a year of using Samcart, which was $200 a month, my okay. bookkeeper and my assistant finally convinced me to move to Thrivecart. Uh, so I'm saving a lot of money. Yeah. Okay. So the affiliates start rocking, still doing the podcast uh, guest circuit. Um, anything else on the marketing side? Yeah. So around Black Friday, the membership was nine months old and I had about 800 members, we'll say. And I decided to do something really wild. I was worried about the next year. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going nine months. Can I go, you know, what happens at a year? Like, am I going to give up? Is everybody going to realize I'm an idiot? You know, the <laughs> imposter syndrome finally caught up to me. Usually, again, that's a recurring thing. It doesn't usually catch up for a while. And I thought also, like, how can I commit to this even more? How can I show people I'm committed and how can I commit next year so I don't get distracted? Because I'm a creative person. I I knew, but I knew this was a gold mine and I needed to stay committed to it. So again, that public accountability. So I wrote my email list of customers, the people inside the membership. And I said, hey, I'm thinking about doing this thing where you sign up for a year of the membership so you don't have to pay monthly anymore. And when you sign up for a year, you get access to all my other products for free. Because at this point, I was doing one-off workshops. I was, you know, creating other content. You know, $9, that doesn't get you uh, much when you've only got a couple hundred people, right? Okay. And I, so I got a bunch of emails back. Liz, that's crazy. You're not going to make any money next year, dot, dot, dot. But if you sell it, I'll buy it. And that's <laughs> when I knew, right? <laughs> That's Cause you're, when cause I you're knew. like, um, you're like pulling forward all this revenue. Like you're gonna have a big spike, but then the recurring revenue like dries up. That's, am I interpreting what, what your fear is right. here? Yeah. I was okay. wondering, oh, are people going to start at a year? You know, these founding members, are they going to start dropping off? Am I going to have time next year to promote, you know, like Nick said at the top of the hour, like, am I going to have to start from zero again? Like, when is this stack of cards going to fall down and how can I pull forward that money? Right. And, yeah. and that commitment of customers. And so that was my idea. And I thought to myself, well, I'm not actually going to lose money the way these people think. Because I'm doing what Nick said. I'm on this podcast circuit, right? I'm continuously growing. And I've only got 800 people. There's like a billion people on the internet. <laughs> surely I can find 800 more next year. You know, sure. like surely I can figure it out. And so on Cyber Saturday, I wrote an email. I said, I'm only selling 100 of these because I didn't know if people would actually buy. So yeah. I was like, oh, I need a little scarcity. And also there was that fear of, oh, what if I do not find anyone next year? Like, I don't want to sell too many. Maybe they're right. So I said, I'm only selling 100. You know, here's the offer. Get in for the year. I made the 100 sales in two hours. I had to turn yeah. the sales page off. That's $12,000. The offer was 108 bucks. There was no discount. Uh, because I was giving away all my other products for free, nine times twelve is a hundred eight. I, yeah. I sold that hundred. Those are just like other like digital courses or something that you had created. Correct, like a lot of workshops, uh, little mini courses, and the kicker was, 
anything I created within that year, you would also get for free. Oh, so cool. that was another way to get them excited and keep me accountable for creating content uh, over just, you know, chasing clients. Yeah. So it worked really well. I opened the I opened it up again a few a few weeks later because people were like, whoa, especially my affiliates. Whoa. Oh, my gosh. Can we share this? What? Like what? what <laughs> this came out of nowhere. And a few weeks later, we sold two hundred twenty five over five days. My email list was only at about 1,200 people at the time. And so in those three weeks, we made about $37,000 and I waved goodbye to $20,000 <laughs> contracts. And that was December, 2021. And I haven't taken a client since that day. Whew. All right, congrats. It's like a, a burden off your shoulders. I can feel it. Thank you. Okay, this is, is there any annual pricing today or is like no, just sign up for this recurring charge yeah so i so after that i did it three times a year in 2022 and 2023 and it got bigger and bigger and bigger uh in 2023 we had two separate six-figure launches just from that 108 eight dollar offer so over a thousand people in march and november purchased that offer um, and okay. then we did a 48 hour flash sale in July in 2023, uh, that made $1,000 an hour. It was 48 hours and it made over $48,000. Oh, wow. Um, but I've done something crazy, Nick. I've cut that offer out in 2024 and it's only going to be available on black Friday this year. So I, I don't know why I did that. <laughs> I. Uh, it was a gut feeling. I don't feel bad about it. I don't, I mean, I feel slightly nervous, but my, something in my gut told me, uh, Liz, you've got to offer this just once a year right now. And so what I'm doing in 2024 is restructuring um, the membership to make it easier to use now that we have a lot of content. I'm yeah. focusing in on my, I call them the annual pass holders. Those are the people that are, you know, are bought in for the year. Yeah. And I'm actually doing live rounds of the content that they're getting for free. So I'm doing five live rounds of the five most essential things that they have for free. Um, and it's going really well so far. I'm seeing incredible engagement. We did a live welcome sequence workshop with over 3,000 people registered over 400 people attended live and over 300 people submitted homework for feedback. So I'm just finding in 2024, uh, my gut was right. The trend I think right now is real connection and I'm making real connections with my audience again. And I think that's going to get me to my goal of 10,000 members. Oh, it's a big goal by the end of the year. By the end of the year, I have about 4,500 right now. So it's, it's a long shot, but you know, that's, that's my motto really. <laughs> well, well, we'll send a few more, uh, your way following this episode. I think this is such a crazy story. Um, like the, like the pricing psychologist in me is saying, oh, you know, it's $9 a month or, you know, it's a hundred dollars a year. Like there's different, like, you know, you could you almost, um, you kind of persuade people to you know prepay for you know six months or two because it's so t low ticket like or you know just prepay for the annual thing and that's like the soft you know what what a SaaS company would do it's, it's interesting I just, that's what I was curious about like well the annual plan is you know sometimes it's available sometimes it's not and this year it's mostly not um, one thing that we have kind of neglected to mention like my assumption is the target audience is you know bloggers content creators you know digital course people like is that who you're primarily speaking to actually i talk to a lot of different people i have a nun in my membership i have like a real estate agent in my membership i have SaaS companies in my membership i have I don't know what it is about Liz Wilcox that people just want to learn from. So I don't discriminate. Of course, I personally come from a content creator background. I was a blogger, like Nick mentioned, yeah. uh, you know, but I also, I think what, why I can help so many different people is it's the business to consumer. 
right? And so a lot of the email marketing help out there is very like B2B, to B2B, to B2B, to B2B, to B2B, to B2B, to B2B. You know, like everyone's talking to business owners who talk to business owners. Um, and my membership is very different than that. It's businesses talking directly to consumers. And okay. like I mentioned within the templates, you get two samples and those samples are written from different business perspectives. So one might be written from a YouTube creator and the next one might be written, you know, from a children's author, uh, you know, something like that. And so you really get a very, I don't know, bird's eye view of what the template is really doing and how it can work for you. So I actually help okay. hundreds of businesses. It's really awesome. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. That's helpful. It's like a little bit broader than I maybe initially imagined. And I imagine if people get into the habit of using this thing, then they're likely to stick around. Like, can you speak to the, the churn? Like if, you know, what, what percentage of people drop off every month or like people are kind of, people are kind of in it for the long haul. Cause they're like, well, as long as I want to have this content creator business, or as long as this business needs to send a newsletter, like this is, super helpful for me. My churn is much higher than I'd like it to be right now. Uh, I just did the math a few days ago and the churn hovers in and around 10%. So uh, the last few months, you know, either it was like 9% or, you know, 12% or 8%. And I think 10% is about normal, but again, I don't really care to be normal. Uh, <laughs> you can Google me, you can see that. And yeah, so, if, you, if you can convert 55% of your email lists, uh, right. yeah, dude, so, that's definitely yeah, not so, normal. Yeah. So the first two years of the membership, the churn rate was around 3%. It was incredibly low. It was like Nick said, you know, I'm in it to win it. You know, this is going to help me. This is a great resource. But I found that the bigger I grow, this is an interesting like experiment. I guess I'm living live. The bigger that I grow, the bigger my reputation gets like oh I've heard about Liz Wilcox uh the higher the churn rate gets because I think my really loyal those founding members etc those first thousand like Nick said are pretty much still there yeah and they love the membership and they love Liz Wilcox so much that you know it's an incredible reputation I've built which is amazing but when they get into the membership it's like, oh, this is it. <laughs> uh, and so I'm actually restructuring the membership right now. On uh, In a couple weeks from the time of this recording, I'm launching an entire new uh, membership site. I've redone the two like foundational courses that you get with the membership. I've turned them from like one hour trainings into mini courses. Um, I just, I woke up at four o'clock. I, I work best in the morning, guys. It's not for everybody. I got up at 4 o'clock and I wrote 5,000 words before 8 a.m. Uh, that's just a help hub to literally answer pretty much any question I've ever gotten in the last three years. Whether okay. you're a beginner, you're somewhere in the middle, or you're, you know, hey, Liz, I got email. I just hate coming up with ideas. And so the membership is about to be totally restructured. And... Uh, you know, maybe we'll have to do a follow up episode to see what my churn looks like in six months. But I've really worked hard. I've hunkered down. This is another reason I was like, oh, I can't focus on these big launches. I need to focus on who's inside my membership right now and yeah. help them and, you know, worry about the rest later. And so I've worked very hard to uh, decrease that churn and we'll see what happens. Yeah, because if you're losing 10% every month. Well, now I got to go find 400. You know, I got to find more yeah, than 400 new, think, new members to replace them if I want to keep growing this thing. Yeah, we lost close to a thousand people last year. So you yeah. think I have 4,500 right now? I could have had 5,500, right? Like that's that's a, a th that's nine thousand dollars a month I'm missing, <laughs> right? Like mm -hmm. that's yeah, that was yeah. my original where, dream. Yeah, where uh, did and you guys go? Just, yeah, but I mean, it's a good problem to have. And it's a very, like I said, it's an interesting kind of experiment I feel like I'm living in of like, you know, the more shows Liz gets on, the bigger her reputation gets. Actually, the the colder the audience, I guess, the mm -hmm. more 
tight the membership has to be, the more, um, I don't know, like professional it has to be, which if you look at Liz Wilcox, you think, oh, she's only semi-pro, <laughs> you know, and that's, and that's kind of what I've built a brand on is being semi-pro. Like, hey, if I can do it, certainly you can do something else too. Um, well, it's but pro I'm in like your a, own, like very unique way. Like if you, all the website copy, like all of the images in the language, like it stands out as being different. And if that doesn't appeal to you, then yeah, then this is probably not going to be a fit. But for the people who it does resonate with, they're like, all right, this is, yeah, this makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And the last thing I'll say about the churn, uh, and Nick mentioned it at the top, I was on Survivor. And so la in 2023, when the churn was going up, Liz Wilcox was actually gone. I took 90 <laughs> days off of work, like consecutively. I did not work or log into my computer for 90 days. Um, and my, I was also applying to be on the show. And then I was recovering. If you've ever seen Survivor, uh, it's a pretty cutthroat game. So I spent months mentally recovering with their TV show psychologist after. And so I do think that also has partly to do with it was that, you know, I really, my head really wasn't in the game in 2023, but in 2024, I couldn't be more excited to get back to serving my members and, uh, you know, helping more people with email marketing. It's so exciting. Yeah. Where, where does the time go today? I mean, it's awesome to be able to take that kind of time off and like preload these template deliveries and say, all right, I'm, I'm going off the grid. I'm going, I'm going to the Island. Um, yeah, what's, that's... what's, uh, what's a day in the life look like today? Uh, today I, I tend to only work about five hours a day. I take my daughter to school. I'm a single parent. So, you know, I do all that stuff by myself. And so I turn the computer on around 9am and I turn it off around 2pm and I, I have a lot of food allergies, so I take a one-hour lunch, uh, not because some guy on the internet told me that's important to rest. I actually have to cook <laughs> all my meals, and it normally takes about 30 minutes to cook and 30 minutes to eat. So I'm really only working about four hours a day, and of course, right now I'm working a lot more because we're restructuring the membership. You know, we're launching a new website on the third birthday of the membership. So we got a lot of going on, but it's really, really fun. I'm at this point in the game, I'm really only doing the things that I want to do. And I'm really just talking to the people I want to talk to and helping them. And that's what feels so good. And that's what makes me so grateful for that Liz Wilcox in the past that said, you know what, this $20,000, like, yeah, that feels good in this capacity. But really, it feels like a lot of responsibility. And I'm so glad I leaned into, yes, go with the monthly recurring revenue. Get up a little early so you can do both at the same time. Uh, yes, yeah. keep pushing. And I mean, I couldn't do that if I hadn't done that. So it feels really good. Yeah, that's that's really cool. It feels it must feel like you just have won the game to be able to get up and work on the stuff that you want to work on and serve the people that you want to serve. Um, and, and thanking your past self for making those investments in content and community and you know all the things that led to this. There was a line from Brian Gearin on the show, and I'm probably going to butcher it, but it was like, you know, the entrepreneur's job is to live a year in the future and try and set things up today to get to where you want to go. And that's something that has, has stood out to me. Somebody, uh, a coach of mine recently said like, if you, uh, if you don't see yourself doing this three years from now, why are you doing it today? You know, it's like, oh, okay. You know, figure out a way to start to peel back, uh, those responsibilities. Um, but what's next? We're going to a thousand members. What's, uh, what's the future hold for this membership and for Liz Wilcox? Yeah. So for the membership, I'm trying to get to 10,000 by, you know, Christmas. Sorry, 10,000, 10,000, <laughs> 10,000, <I got> <laughs> 10,000. That feels, I don't know. There's just something about that. That's huge. That, that's a, yeah. That's almost, now, it, now we're starting to get into like, well, shoot, this is like, I mean, Netflix is a huge business, but it's like, okay low, low price point, um, you know, low ish churn and can reach a huge segment of the population. Yeah. And I always knew, yeah, I love that Nick just brought up Netflix because that was my inspiration to start. I said, well, Netflix was only like $7 when it started and it had yeah. a lot of overhead costs and I don't, and I will never need 
Netflix type numbers. You know, maybe I just need a thousand. And now the 10,000 is about showing people what is possible. It's not about, oh, 10,000, I'm awesome. And that's going to get me on this show and that show. It's about who I'm talking to. Again, going back to who you're serving. And to me, showing people that you can have a million dollar membership without running ads, without any kind of crazy client work on the backside or whatever is so important to me right now. You know, I know I'm going to hit that 10,000 because I, I want to show my people that it's possible. And that's what's next for Liz Wilcox and email marketing membership. We're pulling for you. 10,000, a million dollar membership. Yeah, we will have to do uh, the follow up because I think that sounds really cool. Uh, LizWilcox.com. That's where you can find her. There's a big pink button to uh, get yourself signed up. Let's uh, wrap this thing up with your number one tip for Side Hustle Nation. The next time you're feeling really overwhelmed, just ask yourself two questions. Number one, what would this look like if it was really easy? And if you're like me and you live in the real world, a lot of things aren't really easy. So give yourself a follow-up question. What would this look like if it was fun? And between the two, I think you'll come up with your next right step. Very good. What would it look like if it were easy? Some inspiration from Tim Ferriss on that one. And what would it look like if it was fun? The last thing we need is a side hustle or a second job that we come to dread doing. It's got to be fun. It's got to be exciting. It's got to be interesting, whatever sparks your curiosity. A couple notes before we wrap here. Uh, number one for me was, uh, you know, you want recurring revenue, you want recurring revenue, you got to solve a recurring problem. Hey, this, there's always another Thursday coming around. I got to figure out how to send out this newsletter. That's kind of like my next project after we come up, you got to send out this newsletter, got to be consistent with it. Um, and lots of other people in that same boat, Hey, we're already paying for our email software. If you're not using it, you're just making a donation to, you know, active campaign, convert kit, whoever it is. So uh, recurring revenue, got to solve a recurring problem. Love the idea of selling your sawdust. Hey, I am an expert in this. I was doing this for clients. How can I go from one to one to one to many? Like hopefully that sparks a little bit of creativity or inspiration uh, for you to potentially set up something similar. And then if you're going to convert 55% of your email list, it's going to have to be a no brainer offer. Like this one was something that clearly resonated really well. It hit this blue ocean of, Hey, nobody else is doing this and we're going to do it. We're going to do it at a low price point and we're going to make it a no brainer for you. Where if you're using it correctly, you're going to have a tremendous ROI on this. Cause you know, every, whatever the stat it, you probably know it better than me. Like whatever, every dollar you spend on email generates 50 bucks in return or something. So there's, uh, a clear ROI for, for customers here as well. You made it to the end of episode 600. Now, whether it is your first time uh, tuning in or the 600th, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for spending a little bit of time with me and Liz today. Uh, if you're wondering what to listen to next, of course, I mean, you, you're welcome to binge on the entire archives. <laughs> we, should pro- we should probably have t-shirts made for like, you know, the, the select few who have made it through uh, for every episode. Um, but if time is a little bit tighter, I totally get that. What you can do instead is go to hustle.show, answer a few short multiple choice questions over there. And I'm going to put together a personalized playlist for you of the episodes that are going to be most uh, most helpful, most impactful for you based on those answers. Thousands of listeners have already claimed theirs, and I want to invite you to be next. That's hustle.show for your personalized playlist. Big thanks to Liz for sharing her insight. Thanks to Pete from Do You Even Blog for the intro. Thanks to our sponsors for helping making this content free for everyone. You can hit up sidehustlenation.com slash deals for all the latest offers from our sponsors in one place. Thank you for supporting the advertisers that support the show. That's it for me. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you're finding value in the show, the greatest compliment is to share it with a friend. So fire off a text message. Hey, you got to go check this out. We should set something up like this. Until next time, let's go out there and make something happen. And I'll catch you in the next edition of the Side Hustle Show. Hustle on.